Alright, hey everyone, I'm Alfred, and welcome back to Castlevania 2. Boop. Alright, last time, we got to this new mansion. This fancy schmankin' new mansion. It's fine, I can take it. Yeah, this is the first Castlevania game where health is like, kind of becomes a non-issue. Because, you may recall from uh, Castlevania 1, by the end of the game, you can take four hits total when you're fighting the randomly placed death scythes that just kind of show up and they expect you to just know where the things that spawn randomly will show up. Avoid them before they can hit you. All that stuff. After, of course, let's not forget. Um, the hallway full of Grim Reaper's paintings, Medusa heads, and Axe Knights. Yeah, you can only take four hits all the way through. Absolute nightmare. But in here, I just fell on a spike pit, and this is the nest. Spike pits mean that you lose a life, you know? You get, all your health gets drained, but this is the first Castlevania where, like, that's not really a thing. That poor guy. Never able to kill a Belmont. Just stuck up all the way. Who put him there? What developer was like, I want to put a skeleton all the way up here. That'll be funny. You know, actually, it's funny I mentioned the, um... The hallway before death. I won't say why, for those of you who know this game. Oh, hello, Dracula's weird gargoyle friend. Gotta conserve just enough hearts to buy the oak steak. I like these little weird trident spearmen. Okay. See, these guys who hit me for like way more than the other guys did and ended up being big problems for me earlier, now don't really do that much. They pose much less of a threat. See, if I could jump off right there, that'd be great. But I can't. There you go. Bip. Oh boy. <gasps> no. Bro. That is so uncool. What you asking, fam? Still 50 hearts for an oak steak? Yep. This game, dude. They're just... That's just one of those things about this game that is, like, a legitimate problem. Like, stopping to grind in the middle of a dungeon is a really weird thing. Like, and it, I would, I might even feel better if I could just buy all the oak steaks at once. Like, I feel like I would rather just grind maximum hearts and buy myself five oak steaks rather than, you know, doing this every time. Because now this is two mansions running that I've done this. I've only got 12. Dog. And it was because I messed up, like, a little jump. It's really kind of annoying. I messed up a little jump, landed a guy, couldn't take the damage. But yeah, it's one of those things about this game that just doesn't really work. Because I am, I think, one of the more uh, appreciative of this game. I really do like what it did for the medium and the genre. And for the, for the franchise it's a part of as well. There's a thing, there's a concept with some games. Um, I'm going to talk about Devil May Cry here again. So pardon me. You know, got to have something to do while I'm grinding. But Devil May Cry 1 is pretty good, but kind of clunky. Oh, gosh. Please, I'm running out of these. Have mercy! Devil May Cry 2, uh, Devil May Cry 1 is a little clunky, but that's okay. We still love it. 
It's campy, corny, silly, and funny. And controls are... Uh, it could be tighter, though. You know. It's no Bayonetta. Uh, however... Devil May Cry 2 is one of the most joyless, unfun video games I have ever had the displeasure of being forced to play. And yes, I was in fact forced to play that game. And then Capcom were like, Capcom, by the way, is the company that makes Devil May Cry. Capcom were like, wow, Devil May Cry 2 sucked. If we ever make a Devil May Cry 3, it has to be good. Um, I think Devil May Cry 2 is miserable. I think Devil May Cry 1 is fun, but could be better. I think Devil May Cry 2 is one of the greatest games of all time. For a lot of reasons. The controls, the acting, the action... And interestingly, the pacing. I think Devil May Cry 3 is one of the mo one of the best paced games of all time. And so that's the thing, right? After 2 was... Like, 2's difficulty primarily comes from the confusing levels and weird clues and puzzles you have to solve. Not from difficulty. Difficulty was why a lot of people really enjoyed Castlevania 1, because it's a very hard, satisfying experience. Much like, um, oh, I don't know, like Ninja Gaiden. Um, and then 2 is just not. 2 is difficult in all kinds of different ways that don't really fit the spirit of Castlevania. Or so a lot of people thought. And so they kind of knew that they would have to stick the landing, you know? Like, if Castlevania 3 comes out, because people like Castlevania 1. And they are of two minds about Castlevania 2. If they don't like Castlevania 3, Castlevania is dead. We're not making any more Castlevanias, you know? If we don't absolutely stick that landing, then the franchise is over. And then they totally did. Castlevania 3 has an interesting game mechanic that really helps mix it up and help it shine when compared to its brothers. Uh, the fact that you have a party. It introduces the Belmont as a proper lineage. A nest in an oak stake? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm cool. I'm chill. I'm a perfectly happy little boy. But yeah, it's one of those things where, like, they had to stick the landing, you know? Because if they didn't, it all would have been over. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> That's also um, what I think about Breath of the Wild. Because Breath of the Wild is a lot of controversial changes for Zelda. It's far more like Skyrim than any other Zelda. Where you, like, do all these little pocket dungeons. Like, even the real dungeons don't feel like regular Zelda dungeons. You get most of your puzzle-solving things in the first hour of play, and then don't really get a lot more. There's breakable weapons. And what's more, they changed Link's iconic outfit. Link doesn't wear the green tunic anymore, he wears blue. And like, I think a lot of those changes are good. But if they hadn't stuck that landing right, then they would have been crucified. You know, it's possible to beat the... Oh, hey, by the way, it's death. See, so yeah, remember how he was, like, this nigh-impossible boss that I really only beat by cheating with a holy water? Let's, let's see how we do. 
That's two hits total. Okay, two rounds of death. You got me in the corner where I wasn't able to recover. This is a this is a, a casualty of the nest, I think. I don't know why death throws little scythes at the player instead of just hitting them with a the big one. Wanna know something funny though? Can you just walk away from him? You now possess Dracula's eye, I think? Yeah, eyeball. I love that they call it the eyeball in full. So yeah, this is a this is a weird place. This is the first proper boss fight we've had. So yeah, I think you get a unique weapon for fighting death. But I mean god, who cares? The whip is fine. Oh, death touching you hurts you a lot. That's what's happening. Okay. Well, anyway, bye. So yeah, possibly the most legendary encounter of Castlevania 1. Because the thing about Castlevania 1 is that death, you have, death is a regular boss in that you have to go through the entire stage, much like you do with, you know, the other bosses. You have to go through the whole stage if you game over at him. And you always, always have to go, so even if you play the level perfectly, and the level, by the way, contains possibly the craziest thing in Castlevania, the Axe Knights with the Medusa heads. That might be the craziest thing. In addition to all the other things like Fleeman and the other stuff in that level. The Bone Guys. Bone Fellas. Also, like, you still have to go fight death at the end of it. And it's... It's this ultimate supreme giga nightmare, you know? Death is this brick wall to the face. You cannot defeat him. And then we get to Castlevania 2 and it's like, Hey Simon! See ya! You know? Oh, that's why he's here. It's just a little weird, you know? Um, sir, they do that a lot. How do I get down from here, also? Do I have to thread it into here? That guy is not having a good time. Oh, there we go. Uh, pardon me, sir. I was just walking here. I think I have to grind, but I also have to pee, so I'll be right back. Hey, little update. <clears throat> pardon me. So this is the best way I found to grind. Oops. Let's hop up on this little block, and that scrolls the screen enough to make this guy respawn. And then you kill him, and then you respawn him again. And then if you if you do a heart, then you pick it up, and then you jump and then you do it again. And it's you know this is about as smart as it be. Oh, man. It certainly is a thing. Ooh, my wife's home. All right. She's been out with her friends. One moment, everyone. All right, hey, so, uh, ground up some hearts. I think we go this way. Yes, it's the boatman. Go, Boatman! Sure, I'll take you to a good place. Heh, heh, heh. Thank you.
You gotta be so ready on that. I have no idea why the timing to get off the boat is so tight. So what you have to do is come back here without the heart. And normally this is where you would, this is what would happen, you know, just normally. Um, but because I have multiple guides for this game open, I know what I need to do. <laughs> I don't have the heart equipped, right? Yeah. Oh, he shot a fireball at me, but my shield blocked it. All right. So this is the next town. I don't remember the name. But we need to buy more laurels here. Um, hmm. What is this called? This is... Aldra. Town of Aldra. Right. Town of Aldra. What are we looking at here? It's 4 a... It's midnight, in fact. Great. Well, what do I have? I have the maximum amount of hearts. Oh, also I leveled up. I'm level 2 again. As you may be able to see, my health bar is bigger. So in this town, we need a man who has the Morning Star. Um, the Morning Star is just a good whip in this game. <laughs> nice. But um, in Castlevania Season 2, the Morning Star is like this super important radical whip, and I think it might even replace the Vampire Killer in Castlevania lore, but I'm not sure about that. Um, but here, just a guy selling it. Who knows? It bears mentioning, a Morning Star is a real weapon, mythologically speaking, and historically speaking for that pattern. Um, I think it's just a spiked mace. Um, typically a mace would have like a ball on the end of it. If you, if it's like that weird little diamond shape, then it's a flanged mace. Um... But if it's spiked, it becomes a morning star. And it's interesting because it's one of the only ways for, in um, role-playing games, priests and other classes of, you know, church churchery to deal uh, bleeding damage. The morning sun has vanquished the horrible night. Hep, hep, come on. Alright, you got laurels for me? I'm gonna need some laurels. What's the word, weird guy? Will you buy some garlic? No, I don't think I need it. The guy didn't say I did. I also still have a garlic left over. Back alley spice dealers, you know? And not like melange. You know, just regular oibs and spices. You know, I gotta make some fried chicken. I'll see you at midnight on the river bank. Will you? Um, I can't remember if I'm playing... Sorry, pal. No time now. Maybe later. I can't remember if um, this is... I don't think this is Simon's uh, quest redacted. Especially since it says process. But... Should you play a game called Simon's Quest Redacted, uh, made by a man named the Almighty Guru, uh, it's a ROM hack. It's a very simple ROM hack, um, especially since, you know, NES games are probably some of the easiest to hack and most rewarding. Hacking Space Invaders doesn't really give you much. You're still going to have fucking Space Invaders, you know? Whereas hacking a NES game, there's some depth to it, you know? I guess it also makes sense in the lore that there would be, like, things that are hidden and can only be found through holy water. Because, like, vampires are not going to be able to do that. 
I'd like to exchange a red, a blue crystal for a red one. Thank you. That's what we needed. That is the um, plot relevant thing we need here. However, we do want uh, a morning star, or the morning star, in fact. But yeah, it makes sense that one would have um, things hidden deep underground in such a way that, like. In, in a way that they're, like, revealed by holy water. Because, obviously, vampires couldn't find them then. Okay, am I in the right... Am I in the right town, dog? One moment. As it happens, I am in the wrong town. Whoops. But that means that this is actually a good place to cut the episode, so... I've been Alfred. This has been Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. Um, thank you for coming by. I'll see you guys later. Um, yeah, bye. <laughs>